What's good, Commanders fans? Today's preview is brought to you by BetUS, so make sure you guys check out BetUS. But this is the game that we've been waiting for, guys. This is a huge game. It's a really big game. It's not a must-win game, or as people are saying, is this a rivalry game? It's not a rivalry game because we only play Baltimore four years, every four years, but um, D.C. versus Baltimore is real. P.G. versus Baltimore is real. Is it the DMV? I, who cares or whatever, but it, it is real. The city versus city, that is real. I'm not going to say it's a robbery, but this is real. And it makes it even better because we have two elite quarterbacks going up against each other. All the comparisons and whatnot, we get as easy to compare because of the athleticism, the elite athleticism that both of our quarterbacks have. And not only that, both of them can really throw the football really, really well. Jaden's playing out of his mind right now. Not only is he, is he, not only is he a, a rookie of the year, in my opinion already, but he is a legitimate MVP candidate. And this could be a game where this is a statement game for Jaden. If he goes into MNT Bank Stadium into Baltimore and wins this game against a darn good football team, two-time MVP in Lamar Jackson, this will even just the Lamar, I mean the Jaden stuff will go even crazy. It will it will get even more the hype and everything will just get even more crazy. But of course it's game by game. We gotta stay locked in. Eyes on the prize. Of course we have some Roquan Smith trash talk a little bit and, and, and it's not even that bad what he said but of course anything we take it as fuel to the fire the whole college offense comment by cam taylor Britt, we take that as disrespect we take that as fuel to the fire roquan smith their linebacker said that uh Jaden's just he's still a rookie and he has not seen the defense like this before and i'm i'm actually excited i'm licking my i'm licking my chops to go up against this defense this past defense is ranked 31st in the nfl with yards allowed they just gave up 100 some yards to jamar chase they gave up 80 yards. They gave up 193 yards to Jamar Chase last week. They gave up 83 yards to T. Higgins. And both those guys had two touchdowns. A lot of, uh, uh, they Both those guys had two touchdowns alone each. They both had two touchdowns. Uh, Devontae Adams had 110 yards receiving against them and a touchdown. Brock Bowers had 98 yards against them. Um, they just began cooked. Uh, Rashi Rice had 100, 103 yards receiving against this Ravens defense. You look at the numbers with the Ravens, and I'll get to more of this in, in my keys to victory, but for him to say that we haven't seen a defense like this before, we play better defense. I think the Browns defense is better than their defense. I was more concerned about the Browns defense than the Ravens defense, to be to be honest with you. I mean, you look at this. The the Ravens are third worst in NFL yards after catch allowed. That, that's telling you that that's telling us they don't tackle, they don't wrap up. They are they're 25th in quarterback rating allowed, 31st in pass yards allowed against scrambling quarterbacks, which our guy can move around the pocket and scramble, of course. They have a 57.6 coverage grade versus scrambling quarterbacks, which is 24th in the league. And they're also sixth in uh, giving up plays of 15 yards or more through the air. So, Roquan, we would love to see your defense. I can't wait. I can't wait. This is a beautiful matchup for Jaden Daniels. But there's going to be a lot of fireworks in this game. It's supposed to be a high-scoring game. It's going to be a fun game. It's going to be an exciting game. Of course, I am going. I will be in the building. So that will be a lot of fun, of course. But not only that, they're just playing. They're they're playing really good football. We're first in, in uh we're the first scoring team in the league. Uh, we have 13 rushing touchdowns, which is first in the league. And of course, they got Derrick Henry. They're a top rushing team. They're a top in basically every category that you can think of offensively. But defensively, each team has their problems. But is this a measuring stick game? I don't want to call it a measuring stick game because I know every time we call stuff a measuring stick game, it doesn't go well for us. But this is just a good game for us to. Go up against another good appoint, uh, uh, opponent and stack up wins. And it's a great, it's a fun narrative just seeing two quarterbacks who are so athletic and changing the game for black quarterbacks to play really well and go up against each other. So that's the most fun part about it. And um, this is the best team that we played so far this season, other than the, really the Buccaneers. Uh, and, um, you know, going up against a two time MVP, Battle of Beltway, going up to Baltimore. So. Is, this is a, this is going to be fun. It should have been flexed to NBC. It should have been flexed to Sunday Night Football, but they CBS protected the game. It's going to be the Bengals versus Giants. It is what it is on this on that. But I know the ticket prices went up even more, which is insane. I think like the cheapest ticket to get in right, to get in right now, like the nosebleed seats, is like two hundred twelve dollars. I saw something like that, uh, which is insane. But I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. This is this is a huge game against two really good teams, and we are the hottest team in the NFL. We are the hottest team in the NFL. Coming off a four-game winning streak, we legit are the hottest team in the NFL right now. Yeah, the, the cheapest ticket right now, ticket to get in, is $302. But, all right, um, so those are all the narratives and storylines and whatnot that I can really think of. Um, 
that's that's it's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, you you look at the hype videos that people are coming out with, you know, and it shows like Jaden as a kid and not in middle school, high school, showing him coming up and then Lamar and like all this stuff. So that's how big the hype has gotten for this game. All the national media saying this is the biggest game of the week, which it clearly is. It clearly this is the biggest game of the week for sure. And it should have been at least flexed to four o'clock or eight o'clock, but it is what it is on that. But I get to enjoy the game in person, so that should be a lot of fun. All right, let's get to the injury report here real quick. Um, and uh, keys to victory and all that. But before we do that, I do want to give a quick shout out to BetUS. Make sure you guys check out BetUS. They got a great deal going on. First time users, your first time deposit. You get 150% deposit match up to, up to $2,000 using promo code U2150. And then on your next two deposits, you get 125% bonus up to $2,000 on your next two first time deposits or your next two deposits on bet us so that's a darn good good deal using promo code youtube 150 they got player props live betting anything you can think of 24 7 personalized service 365 days of the year anything you guys can think of they got it on bet us so i do want to give over some picks that i got for the game player prop picks i got for the game um, of course i have terry McLaurin going over 62 and a half receiving yards like I, like i pointed out before Devonte adams smashes over against the ravens with 100 receiving yards jamar chase went over with 193 t higgins went over with 80 rashi rice went over with, with 103 brock bowers went over with 98 receiving yards so these guys give up a lot of yards man they're just not the same defense that they were last year with um mike mcdonald at the helm as their defensive coordinator they're just not the same defense last year they lost anthony weaver as well so they lost some really really good coaches um and they did lose geno stone i believe and they did lose uh patrick queen queen as well so they lost a couple players but the biggest losses for them really is that coaching staff. They had to bring in uh, Dean Pease to be uh, a senior consultant to ha help out Zach Orr, who is a rookie defensive coordinator. You can kind of see some of the struggles. It's not all on Zach Orr, but, you know, they're struggling this year to stop the pass. They're struggling to stop the pass. They're doing a good good job stopping the run. But Terry McLaurin should, feast, should really feast against Marlon Humphrey and the likes of uh, D DJ Steve or Brandon Stevens and guys like that. Uh, Eddie Jackson at safety and Marlon Humphrey. He should have a field day on those guys for sure. And then the other side, I have Zay Flowers going over. Uh, I want to say his over is about 57 and a half. Our pass defense isn't that great either. We've given up a lot of yards to Jamar Chase, of course, Malik Neighbors. And um, we did a good job against Marvin Harrison, but Mike Evans went over 57 and a half yards against us. Chris Godwin went over against us as well. I guess Malik Neighbors. So basically four to the five games. And Mark Cooper had about 60 yards against this as well. So I do think we're going to give up a good amount of yards to Zay Flowers. Like I said, this this could be a shootout. It really could. It could be 30 to 30, 28, 25, something like that. 41, 38 last week, the Bengals and the, and the Ravens. Then us against the Bengals was like 38 to 35, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Then we beat the Cardinals 42 to 14. Uh, so we're putting up points. They're putting up points. And I don't, I don't really see either defense really shutting down either offense just because of the talent on either side. So I definitely see it getting in the high 20s or lower 30s very easily, uh, very easily in this game. So I, I see it's giving up yards to Zay Flowers. So that's my pick. Those are my two picks for the game. If you want to take the over on Jaden Daniels passing yards, definitely would take a look at that. I think you can easily go over on that. Gardner Minshew had a heck of a game against the Ravens, too. He had like 300-something yards passing against the Ravens. Um, Joe, Joe Burrow threw four or five touchdowns against the Ravens. So I definitely look at the passing yards. And then um, also anytime touchdown scores, I would go with Jaden Daniels getting a touchdown. Zay Flowers getting a touchdown. Derrick Henry, of course, getting an anytime touchdown. And then uh, Terry McLaurin, of course, getting an anytime touchdown against the Ravens. They just can't stop anybody through the air. So I got Terry getting the end zone. So once again, make sure you guys check out BetUS. They got a great deal using promo code U2150. All right, so let's get into the injury report here. Um, B-Rob, not great news for B-Rob. He's going to be a game time decision. This is what Dan Quinn had to say about B. Rob. He said uh, they'll take a, another look at him uh, Saturday and take it up to the game. Uh, Dan Quinn also says if quote it feels more short, but anytime you're dealing with an injury, you want to make sure there isn't longevity. Talking about whether this is a long term injury. Now B. Rob, remember he didn't practice much last week, but he played in the game and he did have a great game last week. He had two touchdowns, but still he didn't really get much on the ground. Like Austin Eckler was. You know, he was more explosive on the ground. And I think this may be a game where they really may have to lean on Eckler and Jerry McNichols. And that's why I love that we have a three-headed monster because if B-Rob's not ready to go, it does hurt us because he's more of an in-between in, in between the tackles, uh, bruiser, more physical back than Eckler and Jeremy McNichols. But both those guys have really stepped up this year, especially Jeremy McNichols. And he's had, he's had a couple big games. So, I mean, 
I think I think we'll be fine if he's not playing. But of course, we would love to see B Rob out there and uh, love to see him out there healthy. But if he doesn't play, I would not be surprised. But I, I think we would still be rolling on all cylinders offensively if, if B Rob's not out there. So I hope I hope he does play. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, moving on to the other guys real quick. Uh, FAL Bonner, Jordan McGee. We'll see. We'll see if they play. They will. They were full part participants in practice on Thursday. Full participants again today. Uh, he also said that um, him and Adam, Dan Quinn and Adam Peters will meet later today to discuss whether to activate linebacker Jordan McGee for Sunday. Uh, defensive end F.A. Obata is another candidate. He might need, but he might need more time. So Jordan McGee, he may play. It's, it's looking like it's trending upwards for Jordan McGee to play on Sunday against the Ravens. That will be a tough test for his first game in the NFL to be against Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson. That definitely will be a tough test for the for the uh, rookie out there to be his first game. Uh, quickly, quickly looking at the other guys on the injury report, Federer Mathis did not participate with an illness, but he probably, probably will play. Uh, Alec Reddy was limited, but he probably will play. Noah Brown is somebody to keep an eye on with the groin injury. He was limited, so we'll see what happens with him. Percy Butler limited, we'll see what happens with him. Cleveland Farrell limited, we'll see what happens with him because he did not play last week or the last two weeks. Quan Martin limited, but I think he's going to play. Also, Eckler full participant, which is good news. Emmanuel Forrest full participant, Dante Fowler full Jordan McGee, full participant. F.A. Obato, full participant. Moving on to the Ravens side, Marlon Humphrey. He, it looks like he's going to play because uh, he was limited in practice yesterday, but we'll see what happens uh, today with practice. But he probably will play. I did see a clip of him running to catch a football. He looked pretty fluid, so he's going to play, in my opinion. Rashad Bateman, grant injury, was limited, but I think he's going to play as well. Uh, Malik Harrison did not participate. Salah, who's a guard, I cannot pronounce his name at all. Uh, he did not participate in practice, so we'll see what happens with him. Arthur Mallett did not participate in practice. Roger Rosengarten most likely will play. He was limited. And Ronnie Staley, their tackle, was limited. He most likely will play. Charlie Kolar, their tight end, who had a, who had a good game last week, uh, was a full participant. He most likely will play on Sunday. So, all right, let's get to the, let's get to the keys of victory, of course. I got to make the Baltimore jokes. The bird flu, I chew, and the way they say two and ooh and you and stuff like that is – Really funny that they have a British accent and stuff like that. So I will be joking Baltimore people and Baltimore fans at the game for sure. The Park Heights strut and all that stuff. Um, walking down the avenue and all that. So I had to get that out of the way because I, I live in Baltimore. So I see, the, I see the Purple Fridays, the camouflage, purple sweatpants and whatnot. I see it every Friday that I'm here in Baltimore. Very passionate fan base. I will say that. Very, very passionate fan base for sure up here in Baltimore. But it will be fun to go to the game and heckle you guys and have fun. All right. So. Also, the Ravens are – Lamar Jackson is 21-1 and versus the NFC, which is insane. That is crazy. They've done a really good job against rookies, but like I said, it's a different coaching staff. This is not the normal rookie that they're playing against in Jane Daniels. This is, not, this is not your typical rookie. This guy plays like he's been in the league for 10 years, and he can move and evade and evade the rush and evade the pocket. We we basically neutralized Miles Garrett because you, you just can't – you couldn't get to Jane Daniels. He threw the ball too quick, and when you tried to get to him, his feet were too quick, and JOK couldn't get him. So I don't think Roquan will be able to bring him down either. Um, so let's see here. I'll start with the offense for keys to victory here. Uh, because it's easier than the defensive side, in my opinion. Uh, but offensively, I would just attack. I would, I would still keep keep doing what we're doing with, with the run game. If it is Eckler and McNichols, I do think combined they need to have at least 20 carries. Even if the run game's not working, I would still establish and keep it going. Just like the Bengals when B-Rob had... 16 carries for like 31 yards. I like how Cliff didn't abandon the run. He still kept running the football just to keep the defense honest. I don't want us to be one dimensional. Even though Jaden can drop back and still throw the football down 60 yards, I still want us to establish the run game just to keep their defense honest. So I would say still establish a run game. Even though the Ravens defense is top three in the league, I would still try to establish a run game, uh, but not be too predictable. Like run the ball first down every time. So I still establish a run game with Austin Eckler and Jeremy, Jeremy McNichols out there. If we do have to elevate Michael Wiley, I would like to see him out there a little bit as well. Um, like I said, Terry McLaurin, get the ball to him. Spread the wealth to Diami. Spread the wealth to Luke McCaffrey. Get him the football. He's been getting open. Um, Noah Brown, if he plays, Alameda Zacchaeus. They cannot, they're not going to be able to stop our pass game. Zach Kerr is also Eckler in the, in the pass game as well. They're not going to be able to stop us, basically. I don't think, it's, it's almost like an immovable force moving against a, a movable object or whatever. A stoppable force versus an immovable object. 
they're not going to be able to stop us in the pass game. So I would keep doing what we're doing offensively for the most part. That up-tempo offense, keep that up. Some no huddle, switch it up. Up-tempo, no huddle. When Jaden went to the sideline and talked to Cliff, it was like, hey, they're playing man, stuff like this. Keep them on their toes. There were a couple times where the Browns had 12 men on the field, and I think we can do something similar to that to the Ravens where we just keep them scrambled and really, really keep them on their heels, and we really just attack them, attack them. De'Ami Brown told Jaden that the cornerback was tired. He said, uh, the guy, I think it was Martin Emerson, he told Jaden that the cornerback was tired. And Jaden listened to Deami as well and attacked that. And I think that's something similar that we can do against the Ravens defense as well. Um, targeting um, Steve is targeting Eddie Jackson. He's been struggling to attack, attack the middle of the field in the pass game. Roquan has struggled to stop the pass at the middle of the field as well. But the biggest key to me, honestly, really is fourth downs. What are we going to do on fourth down? When it's fourth and three on the Ravens 37, that's what, a 50-yard field or something like that. Are we going to go for it or are we going to kick the field goal? We are 110% on four downs this year. 100%, but I'm just joking. 100, we're 100% on four downs this year. But that's going to be the biggest key to me on offense. What do we do on four downs? What does Cliff decide to do? What does Jade want to do? What does Dan want to do? What do they, how do they feel in this game on four downs? That's going to be so huge in this game because we've done a great job of converting on four downs. But this game, you know, they have to be very strategic with it. I would still be aggressive like we were against the Bengals, like we were against the Browns, like we were against the Cardinals. I would be aggressive this game still and go for it on fourth down. So that's going to be huge on me, converting on fourth downs. Not converting on third downs, of course, but converting on fourth downs because we are a fourth down team. We like to go for on fourth down, so can we keep that magic up going on fourth downs? Of course, another key to me is Jaden keep his eyes down the field while he's running and moving around the pocket, which he's done an awesome job at doing. So just keep that up. A lot of my keys are just keeping it up on offense. Like it, 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 if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We're the first... We're, we're first in scoring in the NFL. So it's like the keys is like the stuff that we're already doing, to be honest with you. Uh, Cliff keep mi mixing it up, up-tempo, put pressure on their defense, touchdowns, not field goals, keep Tressway off the field, all the stuff that we've been doing the first four, the four weeks after the Buccaneers game, the four-game winning streak, this is the stuff that we've been doing. Austin Seabird, Cyborg, make his kick. It's going to be a beautiful day in Baltimore, 79 degrees outside. So Austin Seabird has to make all his kicks if we do even kick a field goal this game. Uh, timeouts, two minute warning, when to throw the challenge flag, all that stuff with Dan Quinn, analytics, that's going to be huge. That's another key for me is analytics, timeouts, challenge flag, different things like that. The little things, the little analytics, the little decision makings from the head up, the neck up that Dan Quinn and Cliff and those guys are going to have to make. Um, clearly kick returns also act like can he break one and give us nice flip, uh, field position. All I mean is Zacchaeus, a nice punt return like he did last week, flipping the field, stuff like that. No trash away for the most part. Those are my keys for the offense and moving the football, which is pretty simple. All right, let's transition to the defensive side of the ball. It's going to be tough, guys. I mean, it is what it is. Derrick Henry, King Henry, he's broken a big, big play against basically every team they play. The big play against the Bills, the big play against the Bengals. Uh, he's had a big run at every game. So we're going to have to gang tackle. I'm not going to say stop the run, but limit the run. Slow down the run the game, the run game. Can we keep Derrick? Under, let's say, 70 rushing yards. Let's be realistic here with our run defense. We have one of the worst run defenses in the league. We did better last week against a bad defense and, and a bad quarterback of Deshaun Watson. But can we at least keep Derrick under 70? We cannot. If Derrick gets 100 yards rushing this game, we can still win, but it's going to be a tough task. We let James Conner have 100 yards on the ground against us, and we still won. Uh, but it's going to be very tough against the Ravens. It's just a different team. Uh, Lamar Jackson, try to keep him in the pocket. Like I said, that's, that's basically almost impossible. Just be disciplined in your rush lanes. Keep a spy on him. Frankie Luva, rush the quarterback. Uh, uh, keep doing what you're doing, Bobby Wagner. Keep building off of what we did last week, a couple weeks ago, Kyler Murray uh, and, and Deshaun Watson. Dorrance, it's going to be an all-team effort with bringing pressure. We're going to have to send Frankie. Frankie's going to have to be like basically like another edge rusher like he's been. Same thing with Bobby Wagner. We're going to have to send pressure, but I do think we're going to have to have Frankie as a spy on Lamar Jackson out there at times. Um, they have a very dynamic offense. Isaiah Likely, Mark Andrews, Zay, Rashad, Bateman. Um, Justin Hill can can hurt you and kill you all out of the backfield as a receiver. They have so much talent. That's why this is going to be a, a very fun game to watch. Even Aguilar. Aguilar. What's, what did the Eagles say, uh, fan, fans say, when the baby fell out the uh, the uh, out of a fire? They called him and he was like, I had good hands, but not like Aguilar. Aguilar will drop some passes here and there. But he's still a good receiver for their offense. He's done a good job for their offense for the most part. I was thinking for Zay Flowers because I think he's a mismatch against Ben St. Juice. 
Should they try to match up Mikey Sanders still on my on uh, Zay Flowers? Just a quicker corner at times because I think Zay is, is, is just not a good matchup to me on Ben St. Juice. And then Noah I is going to be out there as well. Mayo Fours, let's see how many snaps he gets. He only got four snaps last week against the Browns. So how much will he play? And then uh, third down defense, of course, we got to get off the field. We got to get off the field, and they will go for it on fourth down. So be ready for that. Be ready for them to go for it on fourth down for sure. And we got to force a turnover. The ball is life. Like um, Joe Wood Jr. says all the time, we have zero, zero interceptions this year. And, 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 and um, Joe Wood Jr. brought it up in the presser. We got it. We got it. We got to catch up. We got to catch a uh, interception or something. I know I know Lamar doesn't put the ball in harm's way much. So this may, this may be another game. Most likely will be another game without an interception. But, you know, we got to get in those lanes to make a play. We got to make a play. So, all right, those are my keys for the defense. Limit the run game. Try to slow it down. We're not going to shut down their run game. It is what it is. But we cannot let them have those chunk plays. Derek, 50, 15 yards here, a 15 yard, a 50 yard run here, and then a 21, 21 yard right there or something like that. We just cannot allow that to happen at all. And gang tackling. Tackling is going to be imperative. Jeremy Chin's done a better job tackling. Um, who else has done a better job? All the guys have done a better job tackling for the most part. Um, they got to keep it up. They got to build off the last two weeks. They got to build off the last two weeks. All right, so let's get to the prediction here. Of the score and everything, um, I I can see this game going either way, guys. I really do. I mean, how could I how how could I be surprised if we did lose this game because the Ravens are a darn good team? So it, this really is a coin flip to me. We are seven and a half dogs in this game, but I do have us winning this game, thirty one twenty six. I think we do walk into Baltimore the wire style style Omar style going to their house and win this game. It's gonna be a close game though. I think actually, I'm gonna say 31-28 we win with a game-winning field goal, walk-off game-winning field, field goal by Austin Cyborg and Jaden Daniels and the commanders go to five and one. And he cements himself as a as the number one candidate as MVP right now after winning this game. So that's my take on it, guys. Like I said, this is a coin flip. I could really seriously see it going either way, but this is gonna be a fun matchup to watch. Either way, and like I said, we have the Panthers next week, so this is not a must-win game, but, you know, just to focus on the game and let you guys know we have the Panthers and the Bears the next two weeks, which are two very, very games. They're two games that we should win. But this Ravens game, I, I do see us winning 31-28, but like I said, it really is like 51% to 49%. This is very, very close. But all right, guys, you guys let me know what you guys think. As always, shout-out to BetUS. Make sure you guys check them out. Health Commanders, hope everybody has a great weekend. Health Commanders, peace.